We have known for well over 20 years that hyperbaric oxygen actually stimulates, mobilizes, and increases circulating stem cells. The overwhelming majority of that research has been done at higher pressures, two atmospheres or above. A question I get all the time is, will mild hyperbarics actually increase stem cell mobilization? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So while the field of regenerative medicine and the conversation around stem cells appears to be relatively new, we've known that hyperbaric oxygen stimulates and mobilizes stem cells inside of our body for over 20 years. The research in hyperbaric medicine as it relates to stem cells shows about an eight-fold increase in both mesenchymal stem cells, which are stem cells that will ultimately turn into tissue like adipose tissue or soft tissues like muscles, ligaments, or even bone, but also central nervous system stem cells, which will differentiate into neurons, helping improve the function or repair of our central nervous system. Prior to 2023, any research done in hyperbaric medicine looking at the effect of hyperbaric and stem cells has all been done at two atmospheres or above. And its positive impact on mobilizing stem cells has been well documented. But a question I've always had, and I'm sure you do too, is what is the minimum effective dose? What dose of oxygen or what amount of hyperbaric is required to actually stimulate and start mobilizing stem cells? Could this be done at lower pressures than two atmospheres? Could this be done at 1.3 atmospheres? Could it be done in a soft chamber? These were the questions that I had. I'm sure you do as well. And there was a research project done in 2023 to answer that very question. So in 2023, Kent McLaughlin at the University of Wisconsin used lower pressures, mild pressures. Specifically, he used a soft chamber and air only. In other words, they didn't even add additional oxygen through an oxygen concentrator, a cannula, a mask. It was an air only experiment. So this was a 1.3 ATA, 21% oxygen, 10 session protocol. So a pretty short protocol. Now in an attempt to try to keep things as consistent as possible, this study also tried to mimic one of the higher pressure studies as closely as it could in order to maintain similar variables, similar measurement techniques over a similar time period. Now, as you can imagine, 1.3 air only didn't have the same effect that two atmospheres or more had but it still had a very significant impact. Over the course of these 10 sessions, they found between a two and a half and three times increase in these mobilized stem cells. So this was the first study done on lower pressure, mild pressure hyperbarics and its effect on stem cell mobilization. And now we have some goalposts that we can start to understand this in a bigger context. In other words, at some of the highest pressures we typically go, two to 2.4 atmospheres on 100% oxygen, we should be able to get consistent findings of around an eight-fold increase in the stem cell production. At the most mile end of that same spectrum, 1.3 on air only, we can expect to find somewhere between a two and a half and three-fold increase in mobilized stem cells. The next question might be, well, what about 1.5 or 1.75 on air or on oxygen? The answer is we don't know yet. However, we could start to understand that at the lowest pressures, we have a two and a half to three times. At higher pressures, we have about an eight-fold increase. And so these different pressures and different percentages of oxygen are gonna end up filling in somewhere in between those two goalposts. You know, and there are additional questions that come from this. What if we did more than 10 sessions? What if we did 20 sessions or 30 or 40 sessions? Would these numbers continue to grow or would they stay at about three-fold or eight-fold and then just continue to be that high for as long as the therapy continues? We don't know those answers yet. We're working really hard over here at HBOT USA to make sure that all the people looking for this kind of information are able to find it. When you like it, when you subscribe to it, when you share these videos, that tells YouTube that this content is valuable. When YouTube knows this content is valuable, they tend to help other people searching similar concepts find the answers that they're looking for. So please do me a favor, like it, subscribe it, and share it so that YouTube knows how valuable the information is that we're giving you. Additionally, when we look at healing and recovery and regeneration of tissue, there might be times where there was an acute trauma, an accident, or a surgery, and we're trying to really get the most amount of impact we could have in the shortest period of time possible in which higher pressures are probably more appropriate. At the same time, if we're looking at this as the long game, how can I continue to repair and regenerate over my lifetime, we might be able to use two and a half to three times the amount of mobilized stem cells over months and years to continue that regenerative process for that period of time. Additionally, some people may not have access to a clinic, in which case treating at home at lower pressures is more appropriate. Other people may or may not want something like this in their home, and they do have access to a clinic, and so they choose to go to higher pressures or lower pressures in a clinical environment. The point is, 
all of these pressure ranges will increase stem cell mobilization, and we can use that as part of a strategy for healing and regeneration. We also combine this therapy with additional stem cell therapies, and we do that a few different ways. For starters, if we were using it for, let's say, joint repair, and we knew we were going to do stem cells in a given joint, but that joint is inflamed and it's damaged, well, we also know that in addition to mobilizing stem cells, hyperbaric reduces inflammation. So what if we did a series of therapies using hyperbaric to reduce the joint inflammation and to begin stimulating growth, repair, and regeneration of tissue? We start mobilizing more stem cells into that area, and then we provide that joint with a direct injection of additional stem cells versus having this angry and inflamed joint that we just add stem cells to almost to surprise the tissue with an additional level of healing. Now, even when people add stem cells directly into an angry and inflamed and damaged joint, many see great results. But for me, it makes sense to say, can we prepare the body? Can we get the body more ready to handle this additional therapy by reducing that inflammation, by stimulating some healing and repair mechanisms, and by mobilizing our own endogenous stem cells prior to that stem cell injection? So a standard protocol that we use would be somewhere between 10 to 20 sessions prior to the stem cell therapy in an attempt to prepare the body, then adding the stem cell therapy in. In some cases, that may be stem cells, it may be exosomes, it may be direct into the joint, it may be IV. There are a variety of ways to implement stem cell therapies. And then within a day or two after, continue nourishing the body with additional oxygen for another 10 to 20 sessions post. In my opinion, this would be one of the ways to get the most out of the additional stem cell therapies that we're trying to do in a way to prepare the body, lower the inflammation, stimulate healing, get the stem cell therapy, again, whether that's IV or injection, and then continue to nourish, feed, reduce the inflammation, and continue the healing process with additional oxygen on the other side. As we typically do when I'm discussing research, we'll have links in the description below, including some of the papers that I'm referencing today. If you're looking for additional information around hyperbaric and stem cells outside of just what the research says, we've also done an additional video specifically how to use hyperbaric and stem cells in conjunction with one another. So check out that video if you're interested. As usual, thanks for your time and your attention, and we'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.